Hello everybody, Bill Thornton, SoCal Saber here. How are you all doing? Thanks for stopping by to find out what I have been listening to last week. I like to try to get these out on Friday and Saturday, but I got a little bit tied up this week. I did have a question though. People ask me about my hard rock hats. Was I actually at the, this is Amsterdam. And yes, I did get it from the Amsterdam one. It was a pretty cool place right next to the canal. And right outside there was a big and the big area on the concrete was a ch like a chessboard and people were playing street chess with these big pieces pretty cool anyway that's not what we're here to talk about today we're here to talk about what i listened to last week so still got a little bit of a glare so i'm going to show you what i'm going to be doing the first one i listened to was london calling by the class so i'm going to bring it up from the bottom so you can see the whole thing as you look down until it gets to the glare and you can keep looking down. Okay, this definitely, as you know, is punk. Rock, classified rock and punk. Uh, pretty, pretty cool. This, this was released, uh, this is a 2013 reissue. And I look at my notes here. I have to make notes because I can't remember everything. Uh, reissue of their 1980 album. Okay, the back, it's a 2LP album. On the back, The Clash. You got the song list over here. Nope, over here. Right here. And then some pictures. Okay, then the, the inner sleeves are pretty nice. They got the lyrics on them. They got... The, <clears throat> You can see the lyrics for each song, and then they got some pictures along the bottom, and then on the back, and there's two two separate inner sleeves. It's pretty cool. If you like punk? Don't have this one? Check it out. You can find it on streaming and so forth. If you would like it or not in your collection, I did purchase this, and it's in the uh, comes on the nice. Well, I'm having a, a battle here with the sleeves today already. So, okay. Side two, London Calling. Nice 180 gram vinyl. Let me get this before I move on. I want to put my albums back in their protective leaves and that's how I protect them from being pulled out if it's a paper sleeve I take it out take it out of the paper so that was number one now I went back in time on this one here this check this one I picked this one up in a uh, um, what do you call it uh, a whatnot auction let me just get my notes up here. <clears throat> and it's Buffalo Springfield. Who could think I'd miss this group? Neil Young, Stephen Stills, Richie Furre, Jim Messina, Bruce Palmer, and Dewey Martin. They didn't last too long. This was their debut album, which came out in uh, <clears throat> 1973, and I think this is an original. We'll take a closer look once I get it out of here. And uh, they had three albums that they put out, and then, uh, as you know, if you know Neil Young, Stephen Stills, and those other guys, you know that they went on to, what I could say, bigger and better things. Okay. It's just uh, the back has some drawings on it, and it's got somebody wrote their name on the front, as you can see, which detracts from the value. But I'm not in the my music for value. If I have a value one, that's nice. But I don't. I won't turn this down when I had an opportunity to get it. And it is a gatefold. Uh, 
Let's see if I can make this picture room a little bit better here for you. Nope. This way. And a lot of text for reading. Not too bad on the font because of the way the color is on it. And then, of course, we have the, the discs, the LPs. It is a double LP. And it comes on the nice Echo Records orange label. There you can see that one okay. I don't have to take it out of the sleeve. Yeah, everybody knows, uh, most rockers know all about Neil Young and Neil Young by himself and Crosby, Stills, Nash and & Young and Neil Young with Crazy Horse and then we got Stephen Stills and CSNN. and uh, a whole bunch of great, great songs that have come out in there. So my next one, <clears throat> I was recommended to check this out. I bought it uh, from the local record store and uh, I didn't have, I, and it's Black Sabbath, Sabotage. No, and I didn't have a lot of, uh, in fact, I don't know if I've had, checking out the things, I don't know if I had any other Black Sabbath in my collection. I had some Ozzy in my collection. Get my notes up here, in case I don't want to miss anything, in case I uh, miss something. <clears throat> and I really like this. I really like that, and it's clear it's classified as hard rock and heavy metal, but the way it's mi mixed and everything, it really surprised me, and I really like this. You know, and this came out in this is a 2020 reissue. It was their sixth album that was released in 1975. They always say the the cover is uh, people call it the worst cover ever. Because it's like I'm looking into a mirror, and then here's the back portion. You see the back of them. I don't know. It's different. I don't know if it makes it the worst album ever. Okay. One of the things that I did not like, I'll show you, is this print. Very, very hard to read, even with my magnifying glass. And got some nice pictures of the gang in there and let me see if it kind of came with a, with a sleeve it did come with a nice sleeve it's a single album This looks like it's notes that would go and be going to a radio station. So that's pretty cool. That's neat. As you can know, I don't keep the, you know, once they come in, I don't keep the albums inside of there to protect having to pull them out, in and out, in and out, uh, and that. So that was the third thing, and it came in. The Warner Brothers <clears throat> says the Delta, oh the LA, the LA home of Warner Records. I'm having a really tough time today, huh? <laughs> okay, so that was my third thing I listened to this week, which was Sabotage by Black Sabbath. You know, before I go on, uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and please go down there and subscribe. It help, really helps the channel grow, and I appreciate it very, very much. And everybody, hit that like button. Put some comments down there if you, uh, uh, what you like, if you have certain things that you like, and uh, certain things that you don't like is okay, too. You know, everybody has a freedom of choice now. The next thing I watched, I did pick out, I've been doing this on purpose now, I'll go down the slide, I'm picking out CDs out of a rack in the other room where I just picked the next one. Okay, I'm not getting into the main 670 or 80 of them right now, <clears throat> but the next one I listened to 
was Chicago Transit Authority. Okay. You know, I regress. Go back to the, the, the Black Sabbath one, the sabotage. I think one of the interesting things was the name. And it was named that way because they were having a lot of problems with their manager as far as royalties or whatever it is, and they felt like they were being sabotaged by the manager in the company. So that's that. So anyway, back to Chicago Transit Authority. This came out in, let's see, my note says here, 1969. A lot of people say they don't rock because they, they hear all the mellow love songs and the brass and everything through the 80s and that. But check this one out and you will find them. They have some really rocking songs, guitar solos on here like crazy. And Chicago Transit Authority, interesting on their name, that, that was the only album that was released with this name of the group. They changed it to just plain Chicago because of a uh, threatened lawsuit by the Chicago Transit Authority. So they just changed it to Chicago. No, and the al album's got the, the back, it's got all the songs listed on it. You know, I'm trying to see what... The one was like freeform guitar. That really rocks. That's a that's a, 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 a and some of the stuff that uh, that everybody became familiar with, like beginnings, question sixty seven, and that, those forth. They were a little bit heavier on this album than they were when they were released to become radio hits. In my opinion, and I am not a music aficionado or whatever you call it. All right, I'm trying to get the. The book out show you the nice little book that comes in here. Most CDs have them. It's on a nice little pink CD. And that's the booklet. That's what you were seeing in the cover. The reading on this one was okay. I uh, would have liked to have seen, oh, there's another one. I was going to say more pictures, but I guess every other page. I have not read this booklet yet. i maybe do it this week. Well, I try to read stuff while I'm listening to it, but when I was listening to this one, I was tied up doing something else in my home. Uh, not to the point where I couldn't un like, listen to the music, but it did stop me from reading it. All right, so that is Chicago Transit Authority from their debut album. The next one I got here is another CD, and it's from Darren J. in the Delta Souls calling Drink My Wine. Now, you can find this on Discogs, and, uh, but one of the things that you uh, I found out, I don't really... I recall probably seeing these live at somewhere on one of my many travels. I used to make travels all over the, the west of the Mississippi to Memphis, Nashville, down to Texas and everything. And I think I saw them playing and they were had this CD for sale. It's really cool. All right. It's blues, but I would call it rock and blues. You know, uh, it's pretty ni pretty nice CD and it's not on a label. Darren McKay released this independently using digital recording methods. I think you can find this on uh, Spotify, maybe Amazon. I haven't checked Amazon, but I think it is for sure. I saw something saying that it was on Spotify. So check it out. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool CD. If you like rock and roll and blues, I would recommend that you look at the look for that look at this one. This is Darren J and the Delta Souls. Drink my wine. All right. The next thing, I really went off track on this next one. <laughs> and uh, let me get it up on my notes over here. Uh, how you all been doing? Pretty good. I hope.
So, yeah, I'm going to, you know, I'm thinking about, I have some comments on this. I'm thinking about, you know, last year when during COVID I was trying to listen to all my albums and I was making lists every month and was out of every hundred of which was the best ones. And it just, I had so many, it just got really out of control. So what I'm thinking of doing this year is on the last day of each month, I'll do a my favorites of the month video where I'll list these, all of the CDs and vinyls that I listen to in a month. And then I'll pick out the top three, my favorite top three of the month. Thinking of doing it at the end of March, but before then I'll do a February one also because I didn't do that many Februarys. The next one I listened to was Roxy Music. Greatest Hits. Now this is <laughs> uh, glam, rock glam. And I don't know what possessed me to buy this when I've got it in a whatnot auction. It might, might have been grouped together with something others, you know, so the, the, the uh, what the hell did I list this for as I added to the collection, but then it's got some stuff on the back. See where somebody had stickers up here. We got ringware going across here. So the 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 actual vinyl is in pretty good shape, you know. And uh, but the not the cover. But again, I'm not into this for the value. And will this make my top three of the month or the week or the month? Huh. I I don't think so. I, it's not that I don't like glam music, because I like it, you know, glam is just a style of dress in my mind, uh, you know, and because uh, I, I like Alice Cooper, he's considered glam, and Aerosmith's considered glam, and, and sometimes Freddie Mercury was glam, so, you know, it all depends on who you're looking at, or who you're listening to, and this is, uh, this album, can't see that one too well, I think. Have this one pop out a little bit. So I don't believe there's any other Roxy music in my collection. And unless it's bundled with something else that I really want, I don't think there'll be any more in my collection either. But a lot of people like Roxy music back in the day. Okay, the next one I got is, let me see what we got here. I'll make some notes when I'm doing this so that I can not forget stuff that I wanted to, to tell you about. <clears throat> okay, this one here <clears throat> is it's a double album. It's so far the best of Sinead O'Connor. It is a double album. I purchased this. It came out in 2019. This is a 2021 release. Of, it originally came out in 1997. And the songs off of her first four albums. But I bought this shortly after her recent death. I had some other Sinead O'Connor in my collection. And I like Sinead, I just wanted to get some more into there, and I did enjoy listening to this. <clears throat> so, Cryless Records. I like Sinead ever since she first came out. She got a pretty bad rap when she first came out because she didn't have any hair. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. And then we got some inner sleeves. I don't know if they're both the same, so we'll take a look. This is inside one. Nothing compares to you. Uh, Mandinks, the Empire's new clothes. Thanks for hearing me. The last day of our acquaintance and so forth. Side two's Fire on Babylon. Troy, I am, I am stretched on your grave. And Jackie. Okay, let's take a look and see if that other one is any different. Don't remember.
Yeah, it's a little different. This is the side three and four. Success has made a failure of our home. John, I love you. Empire to bomb the ba bomb the base. I want your hands on me. <clears throat> Heroin and don't cry for me, Argentina. You made me the thief of your heart, and just like you said it would be. This is a rebel song. So this is the second album in the album titled So Far, The Best of Sinead O'Connor. I'm sure some stuff probably is been going to be popped since he passed away and be popping out all over the place. I'll probably pick something else up if there's a bootleg or something I run across. Uh, but at this point in time, I think I, I wanted to show you the nice album, the color album that it came on. It's not colored, it's clear. Pretty cool. Translucent clear. Well, I think I've told you this before, but you know, I've been away from albums for a long, long time, and there weren't very many colored ones when I was first into this. And after I got back into it, I wasn't sure how I would like the colored vinyl, and I can tell you, I do. Okay, the next one, and the last one for our, this week, it was a nice week of, uh, listening this one here is an inherited album you'll see by the cover that the person that owned it did not take very good care of their covers is Queensryche by Queensryche of course this is their first album but it's actually a, an EP an extended play <clears throat> with four songs on it okay it's got the uh, on the side one, Queen of the Reich and Knight Rider. And on side two, it's got Blended and the Lady Wore Black. This came out in 1983. Hard rock, heavy metal, and progressive metal. That's how, that term progressive gets me. I'm still trying to figure out where, where people are coming from. I've been watching a lot of prog videos so far to, to, to determine. But anyway, you see you got a lot of ring wear on this and wear. <clears throat> Okay, this is pretty cool. I have other Queen Reich in my collection, but but I saw this, or I got this, I inherited it. I have cleaned up, cleaned up the albums. They're all been cleaned, and I have played them and put them into my collection. <clears throat> but as you see, when those ones that I inherited that were bad, I put them in clean covers, but they're not they're not the the vinyl protective ones. I will eventually get around, since I don't take these out very often. I will get around to putting them in the, the other stuff. And here's the the label. All right, so that's what I listened to last week in my home. Of course, I don't stream normally stream in my home unless I'm doing a lot of work and I don't want to. And I can't pay attention to the uh, the the actual m music media. I'll stream just so that I have some music going on in the background. So anyway, that's it for this week. I'll be back again next Friday or Saturday with whatever I listen to this coming week. And I want to thank you all for stopping by. Please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Put some remarks down there. Which one of the albums did you like? Do you like? Do you own any of them? Uh, what do you think about? those types of music. What is your favorite type of music? This is SoCal Sabre saying, take care of yourselves, be kind to each other, thank you, and stay safe.